to play him. Oh, I wouldn't last two minutes, I don't think. Yeah. But just before we uh, we let you leave, because I know you've you've got another match up, up soon enough. Craig Waddingham, Declan Brennan getting underway in the winners' qualification. Fantastic game coming up here. Um, wanted to ask you about that six red shootout. You've you've obviously you've you've dealt with that lag, <laughs> which obviously you've just got to try and ignore. And you and you got put into bat there with 27 seconds. How confident were you? I know you've put up some good times before, and how pleased with how well you held it together. Yeah. Well, the last. The last couple of times I've done it, I've done a 19 and a, a 23, and, yeah. and that was where I missed ball. Um, but the only thing was the waiting about, like for me to go, I knew it was quite a comf not comfortable, but a time it, um, I feel good to beat. Um, and the waiting about, yeah, and always I've played Carroll once before in the very first year ultimate pool, and it was a, it was a sickening finish, and he's done me in the six red. Um, but no, listen, I knew if I got a wee split, which they didn't split great. But I just had to make sure I got all my pots and, and, and yeah, I fancied getting it. And then I kind of, I don't know if you heard the emotions, but they, they come out. <laughs> we, we, we saw it, mate. And look, after a match like that, I think it's, you do a little bit of a, you know, you got to let it go yeah, sometimes. 100%. Well, congratulations, mate. Cheers. We're, we're going to let you go, Scott, because I know you're a busy Thank man. You. You've got another match to play. Congratulations Cheers, on the win, bud. Slide, son, we're back in on the commentary duty. Craig Waddingham versus Declan Brennan. A, uh, Another mouth-watering matchup in the Ultimate Pool British Open. Oh, fabulous performance, really, from Scott Gillespie in, in multiple ways. And really interesting there, side to hear how he was, how he's trying to to improve his mental side of the game. I think it's so so important. And interesting to hear him say, you know, a year ago he crumbles in that match and it all falls away for him. But I mean, if you can hold yourself together in a match like that, get over the line. It it will it will toughen you. I completely agree. And I've seen, you know, Scott, and he'll be the first to say it. You know, play an awful lot better than he played in that match. But the, I was still blown away and impressed by him in that match because of the mental side of that performance. I thought he was. I, I was not surprised to see the big reaction at the end because he felt like he was holding a lot in during the match. There was a lot going on. He, you know, we talk about it all the time with Carl Morris. There's a lot going on when you play Carl Morris, and obviously the way the match went and the shots that Carl was playing, as well as the antics and the big fluke in the middle, mistakes he was making. I just thought it was mentally just an incredible performance from from Scott, and I'm really pleased for him that he's managed to put that together and obviously something for him to build on. He's into the winners qualifying round now. He'll be pretty much straight back in action as well. So no rest for him, but yeah, pleased to see him make it through. Great to see the silver sniper <laughs> in action, Craig Waddingham. I was having a little chat with Wad earlier and Oh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you more about that ch chat earlier. <laughs> A later date, that's a real, real collector's item. I've said before on Ultimate Pool Commentary that if there's anyone on the tour, you put your house on making a pot, Craig Waddingham would be right up there at the top of the list. That is a big, big surprise. Declan Brennan won't get many of these in this match, which is a freebie off a Craig Waddingham miss. They don't happen very often. And you can see the the way that Declan's stalking the table, even on a on a clearance such as this, you can tell he knows he needs to be right at it to win this game. One each. Oh, Declan's defence, I'd say that was a slightly tougher shot, but it, not it, far off as surprising. It was, but yeah, I'm with you on the surprising. He's both these players are fabulous potters and you don't expect them to miss much at all. Both missed early here. Oh, that one wobbled.
Declan back at the table at the start of the uh, second frame. I'm really pleased to have uh, got rid of Simon Webb, I'll tell you. He's uh, finally able to jump on a bit of a lunch break. Got a pretty decent replacement, I would say, as uh, Chris Melling joins us. Lovely to have you with us, Chris. Cheers, mate. It's a pleasure to be here, as always, and what a match this is. Yeah, great match-up for you, eh? What did you, uh, before we get you started on this one, what did you, because I know you watched the last one, Scott versus Carl, what did you What did you make to that as someone who's known Carl a lot longer than most? Well, you always know what you're going to get with Carl. He uh, tries to get in his opponent's head, and fair play to Scott, he, uh, he didn't allow that to happen. Kept composure and played well, to be fair. A couple of mistakes near the end. I mean, Carl played an unbelievable swerve shot. I wanted to get your thoughts on that, because that's... That's a l I know that's in your wheelhouse, that sort of shot. How, how good was that? Yeah, it was a brilliant shot, to be fair. Slightly fortunate, obviously, to get position on the eight ball. He's, he's always going to pot the red if he hits the red. But to get on the eight ball was uh, a miracle shot, to be honest. Nice shot there from Declan. Controlled the object ball. He's got to play a nice little stun shot now for the eight ball in the centre pocket. I think in, in some ways, you mentioned the sort of misses from Scott towards the end of that match. A little part of me was almost more impressed the fact that he held himself together considering those misses because they were pretty jarring, actually, some of them. Because obviously the ball's going to keep rolling. He's got no time to pot the, pot the object ball, but... Well, another try break there. I'm not too sure how that one's dry mind. Look at them yellows. Yeah, get, they're pretty nice, aren't they? Yeah, get rid of the four yellows at the top end of the table. And then try and land on the yellow into the bottom left-hand corner. Pass the red. It should be plain sailing from there. Well, that's perfect. Well, I say it's perfect. He's hit it too good. That is very unfortunate to land there. If he's anywhere apart from where he is there, he's absolutely perfect. Just wondering, can he jack the cue in the air and hold the cue ball? Well, he obviously can't. Purposely played the plant to the top side of the opposite yellow to hold the yellow he played so it stays over the pocket. If he'd hit the other side of the yellow, then he wouldn't have been on this. Just needs to make sure he leaves a decent angle on this next shot. And that is prime. Yeah, I played it lovely. Must take the yellow at the top end of the table. Get rid of that one, and everything else is basically a stun shot. I don't think he meant to clip that red, but not the end of the world. Yeah, I'll take it. it just needs to be a little bit careful. It can go wrong this. He'd have loved to be in straight so he could pot this yellow and screw back towards the red above it. In turn leaving a perfect angle to then pot the next two yellows to get in the eight ball. Just needs to be a little bit careful. Doesn't want to leave the cue ball near the cushion. Yeah, and it was always in his mind, that shot. And that was all because of the shot before. If he'd have landed anywhere near straight, it wouldn't have been difficult. Well, that's quite a few misses we've seen from both players in the early stages of this match. Yeah, that one... a little bit different to the previous one, at least for Declan, because the previous one was what I'd sort of call almost like a pure miss. Whereas that one, he's almost... he's thinking a little bit about the cue ball and all the rest of it. But it's, it's surprising to see, even in the early going. Yeah, he had to play that shot with a lot of top left-hand side to bring the cue ball off the cushion and spin down to create the angle. Craig's gone a little bit too far here on the red, I believe. He'd love to be able to pot this and play for the one in the top corner. Top left-hand corner. Well, he's gone a little bit too far again. Again, he's still got options, but it would have been far easier if he'd have landed on the one in the top. Then you play the one he's going to play now, then the bottom one, then the one in the middle, and the eight ball in the corner. Yeah, it's definitely a reroute. He's now got to connect from the one to the top left. 
to the ones at the bottom of the table. Yeah, and that's where the problem lies, you see. As soon as you move that yellow, it can go anywhere. Even though it's not blocked either pocket, it's still gone in a position where it's left a little bit tricky. You know, he's just got to avoid it now, hasn't he, really, with the cue ball. Nice shot there from Craig. He'll stun between both yellows here. He doesn't want to be dead straight. He wants to be high. So then he can play the red in the same pocket as he's going to pot this one. And either screw the cue ball, two cushions for the eight ball in the centre or top left-hand corner. Or two cushions with the pocket where the cue ball's closest to now. He's not played that great. Yeah, he's not got loads of angle to play with. He's not straight, but he's not got loads. He does possess quite a bit of cue power, does Craig, but you've got to be careful on this table. Nicely played there, and that's a very good shot there from Craig. Yeah, he's really had to ram that in. The cue ball is fine, so 2 1 lead for Craig Waddingham. Back on the break, and square things back up. Lovely long races, remember, at the British Open. Races 2-10 on the winner's side. And this is the key match, really, for those in the winner's side. This is winner's qualification. If you win this, you are in the last 16. You get an afternoon off, essentially. You won't be back until 6 p.m. And that, in its own way, is a bit of a prize, isn't it, for this round? Yeah, I, I prefer to keep playing, to be honest. I'm one of them. I'd rather just get on with it. Good news for your opponent, Christy Caulfield, then. <laughs> well, yeah, if I win. G give, him the, give him the win and you can have a couple of matches. <laughs> no, I'm, listen, I watched Christy play last week against Arfan and uh, he played very well, potted a lot of good good shots under pressure. And I was impressed, yeah. He's a quality player, to be fair. That's a lovely shot, that Cool, is. that's some shot. He's missed a trick, though, because if he screws that back, he's then got the perfect angle to pot the red and screw into the balls that are tied up. Yeah, because he's made that, but now what's the plan? For me here, I'd just tip the red out. Just tip the red out towards the centre of the pocket and just tie the, the cue ball up behind the red. Yeah, trying to do a little bit too much there, but... You can yeah. see what he was trying, because he's now left the angles to play exactly the shot that you were talking about, screwing into them. Yeah, he's, he's still a massive, massive favourite in this, in this frame. Absolute huge favourite on reds. The only possible chance Declan has got is if he can get on the yellow and pot it past the eight ball. So in other words, uh, the yellow that's near the centre of the pocket on the right hand side of the table, try and get on that yellow into the centre pocket, past the eight ball, then he can develop the rest of the balls in one shot. Yeah, it's almost landed a couple of feet up from where the cue ball is now. Yeah, this could be a bit of a long frame, this one. Neither player will want to uh, attempt the clearance. And why would you? See Declan roll off the yellow and try and put the cue ball in behind the yellow on the right hand side of the table. Not a bad shot. Yeah, it just puts a yellow in the smack bang in the middle of the table on the blue spot, doesn't it? Just helps develop the situation on his colour. Yeah, and all the while he's developing his own yellows and not leaving. He's not leaving Craig anything, really. Yeah. A little bit of cat and mouse going on. You can see the two trophies behind Declan the Destroyer. The British Open trophy behind his left shoulder. British Amateur gets underway shortly. I think that'll be in action later on this evening. I think there's a case here for Declan just rolling off the yellow of what he's playing here. Try and get the cue ball roughly where it was two minutes ago. Yeah, I don't like that shot. Even though he's tying the red up, he's, he's biding his time. I mean, for me here, Craig plays yellow, red onto yellow and pots his yellow in the centre pocket.
Well, he's decided against it. In this position, you've got to try and pot your opponent's balls. Obviously, the you've less got to balls... advance the frame, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, because the less balls they have on the table, then the bigger advantage it is for you. This could be a very long frame. He's not left that much to play out here. Just wondering if, if Declan can screw off this yellow and put his red safe. Not a bad shot. Not a bad shot at all. Yeah, I'll take the result. Key to a to a tactical battle in this rule set is just always be moving forward, even if it's an inch. You know, just move your position forward, make yourself more likely to win the frame. Every shot you play. If you yeah. just contain, 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 you'll eventually get taken over. Well, there you see Craig playing the red onto the yellow, which he could have played two minutes ago. I don't think he actually saw the shot. So now, all of a sudden, Craig gets advantage. That's a poor shot there from Declan. That is a really poor shot there. He's left him the opportunity to pot the red, develop his other red over the left hand side of the table. He really wants to hit the yellow though, because if he hits the red, he may not have a chance. Well, is he going to try and develop it? He's got to cannon the yellow. Great shot, absolutely perfect. That is a brilliant shot there from Craig. There's many players that would be playing that shot and gone into the red, which, which was completely the wrong shot because he wouldn't have been able to land on a red playing it the way he did. He's absolutely perfect. He's got to get the cue ball out though. This isn't an easy shot to get the cue ball out on here. The cushions are playing soft. And he's short. He's a long way short. He played for the, for the red in the top left hand corner. What a this shot. This is a shot, does. Chris. Yeah, this is a great shot. It's a yellow perfect. Exactly as played. Really well executed. He's got to be careful though, because the longer he leaves that red on the side cushion, the harder this is going to become. Has he got the angle? Not quite sure. Not got loads of it. Well, if he, if he can cannon the red and knock it over the centre pocket, he'll be absolutely plumb. He must hit the red though. He's missed it. Now he's in trouble. He's in deep, deep trouble. Well, where does it go? Well, if anywhere. He can double it, but you've got to play the double slow, therefore giving the, the red time to slide up the table. If he hits it hard, the red will square off the cushion. He has no choice but to go for the game from here. Pot the red, screw back and play a soft double. Could even play the treble if need be. It's going to be one of them shots, that is for sure. Well, the cue ball's going up the table and... Well, where's this going? I do not know. I don't think he can treble it because I think the eight ball's in the way. Hold on to your hats. You never know. Yeah, it was, it was so difficult to play the shot he was trying to play there. Not the worst result, though. He's, he's got a good cue ball, and he's tied the yellows up a little bit down the table as well. But, I mean, let's not get it twisted. You'd make Declan a massive favourite here. Well, he powered that one in, and I was very surprised, because if that had been me, a soft stun shot, and then just play the snooker. There's no way he should be going for the frame from here. Play the middle yellow and play the snooker. Well, it's such a bad shot, that is, because he's, he's kind of tied the plant up now. If he plays the middle yellow, everything's in the open. Now, all of a sudden, if Craig gets out of this and hits the red, Declan is going to struggle to clear up from there. And Craig's looking at going two cushions in between the eight ball and the yellow 
and knock it into the top right hand corner pocket. Well, it's worked out okay for Declan and the yellow up the cushion on the right hand side will be his last ball. Yeah, it just it sort of hammers home that point we're making not that long ago that you always want to be advancing your own position. If you're playing a snooker, you still want to be able to do something that's positive for you as well. Yeah, I mean, it worked out OK, because obviously Craig missed the red, but if he had hit the red... All it wasn't sudden, a bit of bother, yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Declan was in a bit of bother. Not very often you see two left-handers playing each other on the TV table. No, it's nice, isn't it? I always get the feeling it's, it's almost a bit like watching sort of left-footers play football. Like It just looks a little bit nicer to watch sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's strange because, I mean, where is Declan going here? This is X, Y, Z, not A, B, C. This should have been his last yellow to get on the eight ball in the centre pocket. I mean, don't get me wrong, he still should clear up. But he's completely gone round the houses here. I'm sure he'll be OK, but he's got to be a little bit careful. Uh oh, oh! You called it. Yeah, and, and that is this, mean, he, that he's is still the table. fine, but yeah, that's the table catching him out because it slides that much that playing that shot with a lot of left hand spin it hasn't really took. Yeah, he's nice still shot. okay. Good recovery, but a sort of a couple of warning signs sent out almost by the conditions there to Declan Brennan. Yeah, and Jack will be flying out to China on Monday, I believe, to play the A-Ball Masters event in Qingwandao. Yeah, big, big fortnight for you lads, isn't it? It is, yeah. I mean, I fly out on the Wednesday along with Mick, Mick Hill and um, Gareth Potts. Funny enough, we're all on different flights as well, apart from <laughs> when we connect in Dubai. I think Gareth gets the earlier flight from Manchester on... Wednesday I get the later one and Mick flies from Birmingham. Must be the cheap route for Mick. <laughs> <laughs> now we love to have a bit of banter, you know, there's no harm intended, no malice. You notice that on the snooker tour I think Mark Williams and Stephen Enviro is getting into each other as is uh, Sean Murphy and Mark Allen. Yeah, good fun. It's good to see, though, you know. It's like the Jamie Carragher and, you know, Gary Neville. Oh, I love all of it, mate. I absolutely love shot. it. That is a great shot from Craig there. Again, needs to be a little bit careful. Maybe wise to just play this one cushion rather than two. Nicely played there from Craig. Well, it does seem to turn slightly to the left there. He'd have loved to be in straight on the one in the middle, but this won't cause Craig any problems. He's too good a cueist to be missing these. You were saying, Jamo, about left-hand players, mm. left-handed players. I mean, you look at the snooker players, Mark Williams, Jimmy White, Trump, Lazowski. They just look so good on the cue. Yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely a weird sort of phenomenon, you know, because it, it just looks a little bit different, doesn't it? And all of a sudden it just looks so much more impressive. Nearly banged in a nine darter in the Premier League in Nottingham on there on Thursday night. He did, yeah, I was watching it. Oh, that was a bad rack. That was a bad rack. The balls didn't move at all. You just see the balls hardly split, you see there. There's only four balls going up the table. Just wonder if he's... It almost looked like he caught the pack a little bit on the half volley there, on the slow-mo. Well, Craig, Craig's got a great opportunity here. Yeah. He can develop that black as soon as possible. Oh, that's not great. That's not great. He could have... He'd have loved to have been on the yellow that he's next to now. Just stun that in, then play the yellow in the middle, and just cannon the yellow that's next to the eight ball. He can still play it now, I believe, but needs to play it with a bit more pace. Well, that's not too bad. Goes in the centre pocket. 
He's looking in good form, to be fair, is Craig. A couple of errors early on in the match, but it can be it can be expected. Well, I think he's going to take the yellow that he's closest to. Play the yellow that he's closest to and go up the table. That's the shot. <coughs> Screw to the side cushion. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And just play a nice little stun shot on this yellow. Doesn't want to screw the cue ball back, just stop it dead. That in turn will leave him a perfect angle to pop the yellow over the middle. The cue ball will come out and it'll be perfect on the eight ball. Whatever you do with this shot, do not under it the shot. Make sure you go too far. can see he's made sure that he's gone too far there so he didn't snooker himself and back himself to pot this long eight ball Ooh, they broke a lot better there and just look at them take your pick he could actually turn around now to Declan and say, which ones do you want me to go for? <laughs> They're both there. It's got to go yellows. That's some Carl Morris-like behaviour. <laughs> you suggested that. Don't give him any ideas. Yeah, he loves to wind his opponents up, does Carl. He's certainly the master of the mind games. As I used to say when we used to play, he's got more stunts than evil can evil. <laughs> I don't think there's anything better than hearing evil can evil in a West Yorkshire accent. There's something quite beautiful about that. <laughs> How he's born to be spoken about. Yeah, and this is good pattern play from Craig. Just make sure that you screw the cue ball too far. If you screw it too far, you're still fine because you're on the top yellow next to the eight ball. They can see he's playing for both yellows here. He'd love to be on the one above, well, just below the eight ball. If he can get on that, this frame's over. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Take your pick now, Craig. Top one or bottom one? Well, I say he's perfect. He's, he's probably about an inch short, actually. Yeah, he's right. Right in between being perfect on both balls, really. He has to play this one. Nicely played there. I'm just wondering, can he just nip this back a touch? Or can he follow through? If he plays a follow through, there's a chance he's going to hit the red because it spins back before it goes forward. There you see. Well, he could just flick it and get away with it and played that well. Very good from Craig. Races to ten, but even at five two, it yeah. End of that match, you must have uh, must have had the stopwatch out. Yeah, but I played really well to to go eight. I was eight six up before I really had another chance. Well, that's that's the standard you need to play at because there's so many great players about these days, and the key is getting your opponent under pressure. If you can do that, doesn't matter who they are, they will miss. And they'll certainly twitch, and you can see there Declan, he's, he's so unlucky there with that break. He's potted a ball, he's potted two balls, should I say, and he's landed in absolute no-man's land. I think that's a really interesting point you just made there, though, about the about the trying to put your opponent under pressure, because we always, we always talk about sort of 
clock pressure and and all the rest of it but sometimes when you just take that out of it and it's it's a long race and there's no sort of worry about the clock Declan misses that opening ball and leaves it wide open a bit unlucky with the leave it, it's a different kind of pressure isn't it because that's I don't know from speaking to quite a few of, of you boys that's sort of almost what you can thrive off what you almost make your money on is like right it's it's nine all can I take out this finish am I the better player can I do it that's that's the sort of pressure that you thrive off not everyone can handle that of course yeah and that's kind of why I've said a few times on commentary that I'd love to see rather than the shootout somebody play to the end of the match obviously I understand that it's all scheduled and it's you have to be kept to TV times and things like that but the ultimate pressure is being nine all, eight all, seven all, and everybody's watching you, and you've got to clear up. Yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't surprise me if we we have a few of those tournaments, a few of those sort of different endings come in this year. A few more new tournaments. I'd love to see a golden frame. I'd love to see a winner breaks. I know you would, yeah. Yeah. Not if you're racking, though. <laughs> no, not if I'm racking, no. I might get one or two off the break, that's about it. You have to feel a little bit sorry, though, here for Declan. I mean, he's brought yeah, the ball to great, and he's had no shot. And the shot he had to play, he had to swerve it round the other yellow. Yeah, brutal. And you always fancied Craig for these. Yeah, I mean, if Declan could have seen a yellow, Declan would have done this. You know, there's no way yep. that, that Craig is going to miss these. He's too good a cueist to be missing these kind of shots. Well, let's see if the balls break this time. You will obviously get the odd break where they don't break great. They broke unbelievable. That was a perfect rack. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> once, twice, three times a nudge. Well, you can say he's unlucky, but the cue ball was always tracking towards that pocket. And, yeah, it's been flicked three or four times, but I'll tell you something, if that hadn't have dropped, it would have been very, very fortunate. Yeah. And the yellows are all sat there. Play the yellow off the red first shot. And they're absolutely all over the pockets. Well, I wouldn't have played it that hard. I think he's played in such a way to try and get the red out of the area, hasn't he? But it was a risk. Yeah, and he could have tied a few yellows up, and he's been a little bit fortunate there. But he is now in the position that he wanted to be. These are all there. Yeah, and Declan's a kind of player that can uh, certainly reel off four or five frames in 10, 15 minutes. Exactly. He can do to Craig exactly what Craig's just done to him. Yeah, there's, there's so many players that can do the same thing. I mean, there's probably, in my opinion, I'd say there's probably ten players that can do that back to you, you know, run five, six, seven racks. And that's the kind of standard that we're playing at these days. Well, he's gone a little bit too far again. It'd be wise to get rid of the yellow over the middle pocket for me. That in turn then opens up the pocket. Well, he's going to play this one. Is he going to leave the yellow over the middle to get on the eight ball? Oh, a bit thick. And he's been lucky again there to leave a perfect plant. That's fortunate, that is. It could have gone wrong. It landed absolutely inch perfect. And this is going to be 6-3. There's no way that Declan Brennan is missing from here. Got nothing to do with the cue ball. Roll every single ball in. Yeah, don't miss these. Oh, wow. I say that. Oh, can you believe it? Can you believe that he's just missed the eight ball? No. I mean, I know he's not got a full pocket, but... It wasn't that tight, though. I'm blown away by that. Yeah, that was just a little bit of lack of concentration. He took it for granted there, but... You know, Craig, Craig's not got this easy. Well, that's the only... It's the only time in this rule set where you ever get an advantage for having a ball over a pocket, and it's when it's the eight ball. Because Craig has to do something about this now. Well, does the red pass the eight ball? I don't think it does. Has he almost got a free shot at 
They're giving it a go, though. That's a clever shot, that is That's by Craig. Brilliant. But I'll tell you something. If he can go up and down here and Thinks plant the he's got the a chance in, of making both? He can't possibly pop both. But if he leaves the eight ball over the pocket, maybe too hard. Oh, what a result. Oh, brilliant. Have you ever? Have you ever? <laughs> what a result that is. <laughs> yeah, Craig, Craig pouts his lips. That's a very, very good response from Declan Brennan. Well, that's a very lucky response from Declan Brennan. Yeah. He, he has played to pot the red, obviously, but to leave the cue ball touching the eight ball, if it doesn't land there, then Craig's got a, a, a very good chance of clearing up. I think he's just got to whack these. I don't see what else he can do. No, there was nothing else he could do there. That's how, how fortunate Declan had got there. What a turn of events we've seen here. Well, Declan is one, one lucky boy because he made a big error in that frame with that miss on the eight ball. It's important, isn't it? You need to be able to be resilient and, and you know, whether that means lying to yourself essentially and, te you know, playing tricks on yourself to get yourself in the right frame of mind. But it's it's such an important part of the game. Yeah, it's not so much really lying to yourself. It's more of, you know, just trying to get rid of the negative parts. Just try and stay as positive as possible. And you can see here that Declan, well, I'm a little bit surprised he's going for yellows. I understand why, but... What I mean by sort of lying to yourself is what, what you were saying there by saying, just tell yourself that Declan's just potted the eight ball. Yeah, Do you know that's what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I mean there. So just framing everything in your mind a certain way. Well, he played a very good first shot there, did Declan. And if he can pot this yellow and screw off the cush, does the yellow by the eight ball go in the centre pocket? If he can land on that, then this frame should be over. He's got to be a little bit careful, though, because he must land on that ball. Yeah, the one at the top of the little trio. Yeah, that's why he's going against it. He's going to leave a longer yellow. Screw off the side cushion after this one. And he'd love to leave an half ball angle. May not need to use a cushion. I don't think he does, actually. That's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Soft stunt. Try and leave yourself somewhere near straight on the yellow in the top pocket. That's, that's good. And just screw this cue ball down now towards the centre pocket. And that in turn will leave a perfect angle. Oh, Declan. Declan. Wow. Well, he had a look at the tip, and I don't know if it was a miscue or not. And there's no result here because I think Craig wants he can maybe play the loss of turn and hide behind the red at the top of the table. Yeah, and that was a, that was a bad mistake that was from Declan. He's made two or three of them. And that was a big point in the match to go 6-4. Mm. Yeah, I'm not quite sure about this one. I think the lost turn looks free. That plant looks set. And obviously Declan's yellow is half hidden by the eight ball. You've got a bit of natural cover there. Yeah, he's just worried. I think he's going to try and stick him behind the red. Yeah, that's a good shot. Well, I say it's a good shot. Has he left the edge? Does there's it cut a, back? Nah, there's a good chance of coming off the side cushion and potting this. Because if he hits it that wrong, it may hit the eight ball and go in the, in the pocket. Well, he's looking at going bottom cushion into the yellow, off the eight ball, into the centre pocket. If he gets it, he'll be on the other yellow. Wow. Has he got lucky? Nope. No, and he, that was frustration there. You can see it from Declan, and who can blame him, really? He had a, a glorious opportunity once again, and unfortunately, it got away from him. Yeah, not, not like Decky, got to say. He, he's had a couple of bad rubs in this game, but he's also had a couple of, like... It was quite jarring mistakes, I think, yeah, for, for a player of his level. A couple of howlers, really, when 
missing the eight ball and then that shot there well he's powered that one in and that is not a good shot from Craig and I tell you what it's a good job it pulled up there he should be nowhere near that centre pocket he should be he should have just rolled the ball in the centre pocket really and left a longer red now on on the outside tables you can play this with right hand spin and it'll come across and get on the red on here it's a lot more difficult oh wow wow oh, wow well I don't think I've seen both players miss so many balls this year well that that could be a huge swing point in the match it really but, could yeah and it's just again it's just concentration and he's six three up he's thinking well how do I miss from here and then one bad positional shot and it's six four and this this game can turn on you when things like that happen well if you're Declan Brennan now you're itching to get back to the table well how you the could, tide has changed you, you could have put your house on that being dry couldn't you Just you just get a feeling it's impossible to describe but all players know it yeah, and they've, they've come out absolutely horrible, these have. Declan would have loved them to have been drop-ins and just really just rattle off another frame, try and get yourself in in the head of Craig Waddingham, but they're not easy enough for that. It's weird, because I, I kind of love it when they're like this sometimes. I think, oh, this is a this is a big challenge to clear up from here. Oh, I know you do. I just I just love the challenge, that's all. And, you know, we're going to see some tip-tap pool here. This could go on for a while. Nobody really likes to see it, but unfortunately, the break hasn't allowed it to be open. Yeah, Craig's tying up more balls. Do you know what I'd do here? And it's going to sound really silly. I'd just play the yellow onto the red and pot it and just lose my turn. Yeah, just take a ball out. Yeah, just lose my turn. I think that's what Dex, Dex doing. you got an earpiece in. Yeah, it's still open table, folks. Just a, a rules refresher if you needed it. Yeah, at the beginning of the game, you cannot play yellow onto red or vice versa and pot the ball. You can play yellow onto yellow or red onto red. Oh, that's a bad shot, that is from Craig there. If Declan can play off this red and leave it right next to the red but not touching ball, he's got the advantage. I think he has. There, he's left it touching, I think. No, he hasn't, has he? Not heard Orich call it. It looked like it just stopped short. Yeah, he's gained the advantage there. So there's been a red potted. Do you pot the yellow and say, well... Yeah, how do you approach this? Do you have a formula? Do you like to just get a colour and then go to work? Or do you mind... So do you not mind rather playing a big open table tactical battle? I think I'd pot the yellow over the top pocket and then play it off the yellow in the bottom right hand corner and pot the red. It's a little bit tricky to be honest. It's, it's not easy, whatever you do. Mm. Can he pot the yellow screw down the table and develop them? It's, is there any point in that? There's so many things that can go wrong here. Well, he's perfect on your shot to the bottom right if he wanted it. Yeah, I think that's what I'd play. I'd just say, like, off you go. Let's see what you've got. Because the more balls he's putting, then bigger advantage for you. I think Looks he's playing it. Well, he's not. Hmm. Not sure. Yeah, it's... Uh, I don't think either player's going to go for these. These are horrible... Not Craig. a bad shot from Craig, but... Yeah, Craig is naturally so attacking, it's going against all his instincts here. Yeah, but like I said before, neither player wants to go for him and... Well, neither player wants to lose this frame. It feels like a massive frame, this, doesn't it? Even before the balls came out like this. Yeah, and the problem you've got is, if you cover a pocket with your ball set, then y your opponent's just going to play his ball onto your ball. That's the problem we've got. Yeah, 
Yeah, sometimes these uh, these frames are quite interesting to watch. You don't often see these type of tactical battles. But it is important to know how to play them when you get into them. Yeah, absolutely. And they are... It, it's rare you see one so balanced as well. Because usually, you know, there's definitely a side that you'd rather be on. But there's no real obvious advantage to Ooh. yellows or reds here. He didn't want that. And Craig doesn't want to pot his own ball. He's annoyed at that. He's fluked his own ball. and <laughs> He's annoyed. Now he's got to find a shot to play. Not particularly obvious what. Declan certainly got the advantage now. Yeah, big time. And that's what I was saying. If it, obviously, if you can pot your opponent's balls, then you're going to have a big, big advantage. What does Craig do now? Because, well, I think he's got to pray because he's in trouble here. Well, that's not a bad shot. You cannot possibly see Declan not getting out of this if he is snookered. This is a very easy snooker to get out of. Two cushions, possibly one cushion. I think the two cushions is the right shot. Side cushion, bottom cushion. Because if you hit this wrong, you can go straight in off. Well, this looks like it's going between the gap. Oof, it was close. That was very risky. Well, I tell you what, what a roll. What a roll he's had there. Yeah, it's a fantastic one for him. Craig again is so limited with what he can do and the reason why he's limited he's got so few reds on the table yeah and if he'd have put that one over the pocket then Decky would have just rolled off it and potted it and putting it there though is not a terrible result I'll tell you what wouldn't be a bad shot here for Declan just play the yellow onto the eight ball and tie the eight ball up next to his yellow leave the cue ball bridging over it I think that for me is the right shot. I know he's tying his own ball up in, in the same shot, but I'm not sure about this one. Well, I don't agree with that. Well, Craig might go here. I think he will go. He's only got one ball that's tied up now, simply because he's opened the eight ball up. If he plays the other ball, the eight ball gets tied up. Well... The old cat and mouse. Yeah, a little bit short there. He was trying to tie it up so that Declan was forced to move that yellow away. He's not far off being able to do that, though. I think Deck might have to go cushion first. He can hit the bottom yellow. Doesn't want to put it over the pocket, that's a problem. Well... Is that going? Is he going? Pop the yellow in the middle through the gap, bring them out. This is good. Oh, Shots. that is unlucky. Do you know I was going to call that shot as well? I had a funny feeling he was going to cannon the red, but he's been unfortunate there because if he hits the yellow, I mean, it's, it's game over. Or frame over, should I say. Yeah, let's play it now, it's trickier. Yeah, he's going to have to rely on a little bit of luck here. He's going to flick off the red, maybe. That's a good shot. Oh, he's unlucky again. He's very unfortunate there. Yeah, he's fighting. Yeah, I mean, he can pot the, pot the yellow in the middle and he will be on the other yellow. He could do with being low, though. That's a problem. Yep, nice shot. And that's perfect. Yeah, played it per he couldn't have played it any any narrower because it just slid off that near jaw, but that's that's all right. Well, I say it's perfect. Can he drop it in or can he screw it? Well, he's looking at screwing it off the cushion off the red. Surely you screw below the middle. He can definitely grip this below the middle. Oh, that is a lovely shot, that is. 
That is a really, really well controlled shot that is from Declan. We've got a match back on our hands. Yeah, we certainly do. Oh, lovely. Nicely controlled there with a lot of right hand spin on the cue ball. Confident shot that. Brilliant shot. Especially after all the all the bad stuff we've seen really from Declan in this match. He's it's been far from a vintage, but oh, he's not set them up good again. That that wasn't a good rack. I think the uh, the need to look at pushing the rack a little bit further up. You can see there they didn't split whatsoever. Getting kicked in off like that was pretty cruel as well. Yeah, and it might be a good thing because that they didn't break great. Because if they had, you know, they would have probably come out really nice. Where now all of a sudden, Craig has to do something pretty special. A, a nice little nudge there from Craig. Can he play the red off the yellow? That's what I'd be looking at. Yeah, it free up some options for him as well. I think he can. Well, it went straight in. From the camera angle we had there, I didn't think didn't it went in. Yeah, I did not think that went direct. Yeah, that's yeah, and all, all all from the first shot, he's left himself in prime position. Yes, it was a a very good shot, but a little bit fortunate to land where he landed with a perfect angle. Well, he's gone a little bit too yeah, far. I, I believe. Just thinking there, he's gone off. He's gone off the straight, and he wants to be able to. He wants to be short on this red to punch across the table, I believe. Yeah, that's right. And then he's going to play the red in the left-hand corner pocket, and then the one over the pocket. Can he play it with top spin and get over there? Well, he's oof. dead straight. That is like these. That isn't good. For me, there, I'd have just potted the one over the corner where the red is now. Come across and then play the red in the middle. It's done over. You're in the same position, really. But this can go wrong. If he cannons this red straight full in the face, it's perfect. If he cannons a yellow, it may go wrong. Perfect. Oh, shot. Well, I say perfect. Can he see it? Ooh. Mm. I don't know if he can. All of a sudden, it's just become a little bit harder. And it might be wise to try and cannon that yellow above where the red is. Just to open the eight ball up for that pocket. He's just held on it. He's a bit thin on this red though. Does it go in the middle, the eight ball? I think it does. If it does, he's definitely played the right shot. I wasn't sure if it went before, but from this angle now, it looks like it does. Still got to be a little bit careful. Yeah, and that's why he played it off the yellow to hold the cue ball because he was very thin on it. Yeah. And this is a huge frame in the context of the match. Oh, listen, fair play. That was a big finish from Craig Waddingham to find reverse clearance and it was a good one oh mm, how do you okay. like that how do you like that isn't it amazing how he's potted one off that break really good break split well got one in the center pocket and just look where the cue balls landed the worst place it could have landed yeah stupid game at times isn't it well, it can be such an easy game at times, and other times it can be so, so difficult. At least he was on one of the reds. I didn't think he could get there. Yeah, I didn't think he could get there, but he's played a very good first shot there. And 
if he can pop this red in the top corner, I think he'd be wise trying to cannon the yellow away rather than the red. But if he hits the red, kind of arc it around the other one, if you know what I mean. So play with a lot of deep screw. Well, he's going the other way. Got to be a little bit careful with this one. That's why. That's why. He's going to look to play off the red and pot yellow here. He doesn't want to hit this too hard because he needs that red to stick roughly where it is. Here, here comes the right-handed player. Yeah, that's a nice shot there. Yeah, he gave him the shout out. He's, de he's definitely got it in the locker. Yeah. I'm just wondering here if Declan can just screw this yellow off the cushion and stick the cue ball next to the other red where it's closest to. Leaves him no shot. He could actually go for the double, but it's very risky. Yeah, and it's gone wide. See, if he sticks that cue ball there next to the red, he leaves no shot whatsoever. All his yellows are in the open. Was he attempting to do both there? I think so, yeah, but, I mean, he was in no, no man's land, really. Yeah, the result's obviously bad. I just wonder if he was trying to play your shot, but also having a little dip at the double just in case. Yeah, I think he was definitely going for the double, and you can't really see how Craig can miss these to take an 8-5 lead. That'll be two frames away from winning this match. Oh, that's not good. That is not good. He's played that poorly there as Craig. I think the cue ball's thrown that wide. He didn't expect it to throw that wide, but I'll tell you what, this is not nice. He'd love to be able to pot this red and somehow get down the table. Well, he's going to try and screw it in. This is, this is really tough. Yeah, and the, the harder you hit that shot, the more difficult it is. It's so tough that Declan gets a let off. Yeah, gotta be careful. Doesn't want to hit the red here. Oh, where's he gone? Where have you gone, Declan? Wouldn't have minded hitting the red in the end. <laughs> Better um, than this. Yeah, it's, it's just a really, really poor judge shot. He doesn't have to hit it that hard. Just get the cue ball away. I mean, he's got to try and cut the yellow in the corner pocket now. This is this is a really really tough shot. Great shot, great great shot. That is that is a brilliant shot. For me, that's the best shot of the match. That was a, a really good shot to control the cue ball. Land absolutely perfect. Got nothing to do apart from screw the cue ball back a couple of inches. Yeah, didn't he need that? Yeah, and very well played. And what a time to do it, to make it 7-6. It's not going away. He lost a cue ball a couple of times, which cost him two frames. But other than that, he played brilliant. Wait to ask actually, because when you're on those outside tables, you you know your opponents at the table, you do make a chance for the ice to wander. Anyone who sort of caught your eye this weekend, who we've maybe not seen, it's okay if that's a no. Um, I always like to watch Kyle Kyle Cope. He's he's very impressive the way he hits the ball, the way he breaks. Um, for me, him, Josh Kane. And uh, one or two others, Cole Bedford, Callum Singleton. For me, them four stand out quite a long way for me. You know, sort of next generation sort of style, you think? Yeah, but I mean, obviously, we hear it in every sport about he's going to do this, he's going to do that, she's going to do this, she's going to do that. And, you know, without knocking anybody for what they've achieved... It doesn't always work like that. No, absolutely not. Do you know, you've only got to look at... Oh, oh foul, Declan. You've only got to look at Emma Raducanu at that, uh, uh, tennis. She won the US Open, didn't drop a, a set, and then can't win a match. You know, and the, expect expect the expectancy after 
winning and people saying you're the next best thing and you're going to be the future doesn't always work like that no it's hard to deal with I agree but that was unforgivable what Declan just did there oh, I'm so surprised well, I'm kind of not surprised because it's happened well, a few times in this match. Yeah, but you almost felt like the last frame was maybe the one to get him kick-started. Oh, wow. Why on earth are you playing that shot, though, Craig? You've got no reason to play that shot. It was tight. It wasn't easy. I get it why you've put the cue ball there, but why not just pop the red in the middle and knock it out? That, that could be uh, a very, very costly mistake difference between 8-6 and 7-7 seven, seven. yeah and Declan's playing the wrong shot here he has to play the one in the middle then the one that he's just potted then this and screw over for the yellow in the middle granted he's still going to be okay but if he'd have landed straight he had nothing to do wow this is uh, this is a real turning point in the match this is Could be going the distance. Yeah, both players will be absolutely ruining the mistakes in this match. Like I said earlier, it's very rare you see both players make so many mistakes in the same match. I think there's a little bit too much. Uh, people can get a bit precious about. You know, Trey's players trying to play perfect pool. But for me, oh, look at them yellows. So, sometimes it's so much more entertaining when there's a little bit of jeopardy in the match and players are making mistakes. Yeah, you, you're right, but I mean, wow, look at this. The pool gods are definitely punishing Craig here. Yep, dropping yellows for Declan Brennan to go 8 7 in front. Oh, absolutely droppings. He drops the one in the middle, one in the corner, one in the middle. One in the bottom left hand corner, one up the top where the cue ball is, one in the middle, black in the opposite corner, middle. I mean, this is absolute ABC. Well. There you go, your own way, Deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit risky, but he's, he's all right. Yeah, he's got absolutely nothing to do here. Should say as well that uh, we do have our very first player in the last 16 and that is Scott Pope 10-2 win over Reese Townsend he books his spot in the last 16 been really impressed with Scott this season so far and joining him fresh off the back of a win Dave McNamara set 10-7 over Ryan Pisani nicely played there by Declan just leaving a lovely angle there get the cue ball away I think I'd stun this in and try and get the cue ball out towards the middle of the table bang on the line if you can nicely played perfectly played didn't really want to be bridging but shouldn't cause an issue let's keep the edge still well, the only thing that we haven't mentioned is 15 second shot clock zone is now a part of this match and that is what will happen when we get a match that runs deep, but where there has been a lot of chances. It takes time out of the match clock, doesn't it? And all of a sudden... Cut break for Declan. Red in the pretty corner. Hard and he's going to make a ball. He's got a chance. And the yellows are there. The yellows are definitely there. First shot, pop the yellow in the middle, try and cannon the red away. Got to be careful. Second thoughts, I wouldn't even touch the red because you can go in off. Can he screw off the cushion into the red? Well, played it differently. So the ball that he's got to worry about, therefore, is the one just below that red. Just on, as we look at it from the main camera here, the one, the yellow in the bottom section, the two by the left centre pocket. It's just a little problem ball. It's not a big problem. Well, just play the ye yellow off the red here now, softly. Could have only been a little bit closer to it. Because what he doesn't want to do is play it off the red and the red go down towards the yellow at the bottom end of the table. Nicely played. It's come out nice. And the reason I want to put the yellow at the top end of the table is that that was your ball to get on the eight ball. 
Which one is now? The one by the left middle? I think it has to be. Well, uh, well, I'm not quite sure about this one. Yeah, he's he's, he's got to be very accurate with these next three shots. And this is where he needs to be accurate now because if he doesn't get roughly to the centre of the table or on that line, how does he get on the eight ball? Yep, good luck. Good luck, Decky. Oh, can't reach it, can he? Oh wow, he's got a screw right between the gap, I think here. Can he go up the cushion? Is enough. Would you believe it? And I said something stupid will happen. That's in the and conversation for something stupid. And all that's happened is because he didn't leave that top yellow to last again the eight ball. It was so risky leaving it the way he left it. Well, you'd put your house on uh, Craig clearing up from here. But then again, everything has happened in this game. Oof, and that's not great. That isn't great. It's not ideal, is it? I think he's still okay. Yeah, just drop the one in the bottom one of the two and then play for the one in the centre. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Well, I'll say it's nice. Is he going away from it? I think he can just hold it. Yeah, he's okay. Just drop it in dead weight. Wow, can you believe it? You see the puff of the cheeks there. From he's fired up. Yeah, he's fired up. That was a massive turning point in the match. Eight all, less than five minutes to play. Best of three with four and a half minutes left. Been some good stuff played in and amongst everything else. Oh dear. Oh, how is that dry? Oh dear. Wow. Can't believe that one's dry, you know. Yeah, yellow down the cushion, first shot. Wow. Just with the situation as well, I mean, it almost sounds obvious in terms of, of course, we'd rather be 9-8 up, but with the clock as well, winning this frame is massive. Yeah. Almost guarantees you a shootout, you feel, at worst. Yeah, and if we're being critical again there, Declan's gone too far, screwing that ball back. Oh, nicely played there. And this is definitely where you want the cue ball up the table, just give yourself a chance. Leave the cue ball anywhere in the middle of the table or just to the right of the eight ball. Oh, oh wow. Why? Wow. Why leave it? Why be trying to be so close to the, the yellow though? That is unbelievable, honestly. Can't do anything. Can't do anything. And I tell you what, he's had a little bit of form there, you know. He's had a little bit of form there. Well, this final three minutes just got interesting. And that's what happens when you try to be too accurate, JMO. Just give yourself a chance. Don't try and be that close to the object ball. Obviously, he hasn't tried to be that close, but... Shouldn't be anywhere near it, is your just point. Just leave distance. Leave distance. Well, this is risky. I know he's snookering him, but... Well, this is risky. The yellow's close to the pocket, and if he hits it, there's every chance it's going in. And also, if he hits the other yellow, there's every chance it's going in. Well, what's he playing? Well. Oh, no. Well. I'm lost for words. I am completely lost for words. You have to go up and down and try and pot the yellow. You're basically hanging yourself playing that shot, what he played. Yeah, I'm I'm blown away. It's, it's not so much the execution and the going in off. I can't see the shot that he's actually tried to play at all. He's tried to just leave the cue ball at the top end of the table, but then again, Craig's just going to put him back in the same position. So there's no reason to really play it. 
And it could be so big. Well, 155, just, yeah, Craig Waddingham If I'm lead. Craig here, I'm just taking my time. Just run the clock down, get it down to around a minute. And then basically you're guaranteed the shootout no matter what. Oh, oh, oh wow. my goodness. I cannot believe my eyes. What are we watching, Chris? What I cannot believe watching? my eyes. That is unbelievable. Oh, can I tell you what? He's unlucky there, you know. He's very unlucky there, you, you have to say. Well, it's not over yet. It's not, but he's got to pop the yellow and play the DF, and he's got to do it quick. Well, can he get over? Can he screw over, pot the red, and get the cue ball out? If he can, he's got a chance. Can he run the clock down? Also, this is under a minute. He's got no choice. He's got to screw over and pot the red. But, oh, that is unbelievable. He's been so unlucky. He's got to drop him in, run the clock down, run the 15 seconds down, drop him in, and just say, if you get him, you get him. 40 seconds. He's got to do it on the last second as well. well. Tried to sneak it by the Reds. Can Craig Waddingham go and win it? Craig He's got should be 30 going seconds. quick here. He should be going quick. He had to play the DF there. Nope. Quick fluke. Can you fluke it? Well, can you double it? Can somewhere? you double it? 15 screw seconds. it. He needs to screw it. Well, he's never potting that, played it that way. He's got to screw it. Well, we're going the distance. Goodness me. That match had a little bit of everything. Just an extraordinary game. I just hope that the break okay. Well, what's Declan going for here? A different break. Well, yeah, okay. I don't mind that. And he's made one, oh, wow. nearly two. He can go quick here. This is going to be very quick. Stun, stun, stun. Just kill the cue ball, Declan. Oh, wow. Almost a record 18, breaker. 18. Well, well, well. 18.27. Worth the wait from Declan Brennan. That's amazing. The bottom right and red went straight in. Right, you see they didn't break. Game over. Game over. You see how they didn't break that game? It's well, we'll go to a manual time. Obviously Craig isn't taking him in 356. You'll hear the uh, the gong go first. Yeah, th there's no way he's beating 18 seconds here. That's that. Craig Waddingham concedes. Declan Brennan wins. That was a crazy, crazy game. And I think the reaction there from Declan Brennan is just pure, unmitigated relief.